Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm joined once again by Eddie O'Sullivan and Joe from Irish Abroad. Um, we're here for the match preview, previewing the game against Switzerland, basically the cup final. We're after doing our final word there against Georgia, which you've probably watched. If not, go and check it out after this. Uh, firstly, I go back to the game we played against them and obviously we'll firstly speak about their game against Denmark last night and I thought... Kasper Schmeichel was the only reason they didn't get a result there. They were peppering the goal and he made at least four or five mm. world-class saves to keep um, Denmark in it and ultimately they get the result of Polson getting a great goal. Looking at that and looking at the way we played them with obviously McGoldrick getting the goal at the end, I thought for large parts of the game they, they were on top of us and we couldn't even get out of our half. The big thing about that game, though, at times, is we had McGoldrick, who took the heat off a lot of the team by holding the ball up and making it stick, as we spoke about in the final word about Collins not really doing that against uh, Georgia. So, looking at how we played them last time now, and uh, can Collins do the same sort of job on a on a decent surface? Yeah, I wonder. The now we speak about Connolly, that that directness. The pace, the unexpectedness that he brings to them. Uh, I think if Collins is playing in front, I think it it might suit Switzerland. I yeah. think the big call I think is is Connolly for for the next game and, and does Mick try to pose a bit more of a threat in the minds of the Swiss to say, listen, this could go over the top, and you know, or we will go long. And you know, try and force you up. It didn't really stick um, for Collins the other night. Again, we all said beforehand he did nothing wrong. You couldn't, you couldn't blame him. Yeah, and just the, purely maybe, And maybe the midfield coming up by him didn't hold onto the ball well enough. So I think the big worry is is that the the midfield two or the Gordon or Hendrick need to hold the ball much much smarter to give whoever is up front. Uh, some sort of a chance and relieve that pressure. I think the, the the disadvantage of playing with a single target man is that if, as in the case against Georgia, the ball doesn't stick, then we lose position straight away. And because we're playing with only one up front, we're kind of limited in the way we can approach the game and the way we can get the ball up to him. And if he's not getting the support from the wide players, which I, I was disappointed with, but Robinson may be a little bit more than McLean, as I felt McLean was there to, to work with, with Doherty, but Robinson, I thought he could maybe push up a little bit or you know make himself available in that inside right position, and he didn't. Um, and look, it's something hopefully that we've learned from the game. I think if we are going to persist with this 4-3-3 slash 4-5-1 formation, then McGoldrick is actually the ideal player for us. You know, the ball sticks in when it goes up. You know, he's a... He's a, a massive. Uh, he keeps, sorry. He occupies, you know, the entire defense. Uh, he's he's a very very awkward player to to play against. Even the goal that he scored against Switzerland, he had two defenders in front of him, and he still got a header away from the back post. Um, so without him, I'm not really sure how that 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 style of play works. Uh, I I haven't seen enough Collins playing with Luton to know, you know does he play with a second striker beside him, does he play as a target man but he has scored goals this season so we know he's in good form um, I hope that I think he will start against uh, Switzerland and I think you know Connolly with his, his natural pace and his natural just you know you know, eye for goal really you know playing against uh, a tiring defence is, uh, is a hell of an impact player to bring on um, an away game against the the top seed in the group is a lot to make your 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 full debut for an international level for. We might not be ready for it yet. You know, let's not forget he only has twelve minutes of international football. He's only started. He's he started one Premier League game in his career, um, and he scored twice. But he is still very very raw. He's going to be playing. He's going to be up against very experienced players, and you know, and you know. Good players, you know, and, and and in their home ground where Switzerland tend to not lose games, um, it's a lot to ask him to start. I think Collins will start. I think he will still play that that uh, target man role. I just I hope we see more in terms of support uh, for him in in that role. 
Yeah, but I go back to the point is that um, he's already played against Shah, the Swiss fella who actually scored, and he was the one who cleared the ball from under the line. Quarter of that ball was already over the line. Mm -hmm. So it's not like he can't play against, like he's, he's shown he's, he's more than capable of playing against these players, your Aldo, Wairels, Vertonghen's. And Shah, I do believe Shah is a very good player, by the way. Um, but he's played against him, so he'll already have kind of known what, what kind of way he is. So for me, I don't think... I, I'm in agreement probably that he shouldn't start because it's a lot of pressure to, to demand him to start. And if he doesn't do well, then the fans might turn on him. I doubt they will turn on him, but you know what I mean? They'll be like, oh, is he, is he all he's cracked up to be type of thing? Whereas if he does come on, maybe it's nil-nil still, half an hour to go, and he comes on and he scores, or it's 1-1 one -one and he scores. Because ultimately, when we go a goal down, and I think you touched on it either in this video or last video, is that we only start playing when we go a goal down. I think you mentioned it earlier, is that when we conceded, it was then we were just putting them back against it, and it was the same against Denmark as well. We actually looked like we were in a we were going to win against Denmark mm -hmm. away, um. But we only seem to start playing the, when the thing we go about goal down. Conley, I think he, I don't think he will start Conley, but I think he will. Particularly if Switzerland do score, if if we go, if we go one down or two down, forty minutes into the into the first half. Like you said, it's a it's a cup final. At that stage, I would be thinking it's all you know, just go for it. What type of ball does Connolly get though? So against Georgia, we weren't holding the ball; it wasn't sticking. Horan can pick a pass. Hendrick can can pick a pass. But we need to be getting the ball first and giving Connolly that time. You know that good ball, so we can spin. I wonder. We spoke about Robson in the first video. I would, funny enough, I think Robertson might suit Connolly a, a little bit more, and that maybe cutting inside and, and picking that pass for for Connolly to spin around. Yeah, you mentioned the point there about will we occupy the Swiss defence? Yeah, we'll we'll make it difficult for them running the cross line, but will they be thinking there's something on behind us here? I don't think so. With with Collins there, that's not gonna they're not gonna be done for for pace. McGoldrick is different though. He he had that little bit of he did that little bit of bolt. He can stretch it. He can mm, play it down. Well, he, he when he gets around the player, he can win the free kick. You know all these little art forms that that go a little bit unnoticed. But in this campaign, a player like McGoldrick tomorrow night, even in Georgia, would have been the difference. And it's telling that we're we're pinning our hopes on uh, a really young young lad to to come along and be our goal scorer and savior. And I really think, in terms of leadership in the team. Coleman has he scored this campaign? No, he's only scored once for Ireland. You know, I actually thought he might do something against Georgia because it was actually his birthday at the weekend. Mm. So I thought, you know, maybe that gave him a bit of a boost. Um, but I kind of like Coleman. He's he's been solid defensively as you would expect him to be. But I think since the injury, we haven't seen as much. Definitely not at international level. We haven't seen as much of him getting forward as as he used to. Um, and Look, maybe it's it's orders from the manager. Maybe it's his own, you know, defensive, uh, you know, him. you know, mindset holding him back. Um, but it's I think yeah, and look, I don't, I don't expect him to get get forward against Switzerland either. But it's, you know, over the course of the qualifiers, I think I would have liked to see him get forward more than he did, more than he has done. Mm. Especially when you look at the goals. Somebody was saying on Twitter, Denmark has scored sixteen so far, something like that, and we've scored five or yeah. something like that you know goals will always be our issue but who in that who in that starting lineup is going to come up trumps with that big one goal i spoke about in the first video our history is littered yeah. with one goal yeah but, you know we don't we don't need a fella scoring five and six who's going to pop up on tuesday night with with one that's that's really the key yeah and that's the thing as well is that i look around the team and there is a lack of of leaders other than our defense like in midfield and up front, we we just don't have leaders. Whereas I think about Conley is he's young and he's hungry and he always looks like he wants the ball. He looks like he wants to make things happen. And I think that's what people want to see. You remember Rooney came on the on the scene, um, at Everton and he, and he was like that. He came on and scored that goal against uh, Arsenal, and he just kind of he has that similar type of hunger. Um, was Rooney when Rooney came on the scene? Sorry, was was Duncan Ferguson? He time. would have been, yeah. You know, so again, if you're a young striker, Con Conley's coming in, he's a young striker. 
when Robbie Keane came in we had Niall Quinn mm-hmm. um, Niall Quinn was a brilliant foil for Keane yeah he had and the they actually had a good partnership, yeah. partnership but he had the experience Quinn used to hold the ball up really well he chipped in he scored whatever it was 21, mm, 21 in, goals. international goals so for a young striker coming in Robbie Keane would have learned lots from Niall Quinn I'm just using that example yeah, yeah. in the current squad Connolly's come in who's he going to learn you know learn from if he's in that squad who's he looking up to to, to say yeah. listen this is how you this is how you play up top this is this is how you you know you win your free kicks who is that experienced forward player that's going to take him under his wing or else who's the creative player in our midfield who's going to bring the best out of Connolly when he does come on because like you said no point in him starting running around full of intentions and endeavour and an experienced Swiss side knocking knocking the ball around and, and, and him just running out of steam well you would hope Robbie Keane is, is coaching you know the early team so we'd hope that they're working together mm. um, but I, I take your point that you know there's no obvious partnership for, for Connolly or for well well, we keep mentioning McGoldrick, but uh, he could be that the target man to play off, to play off of, uh, you know, as a, as an out and out striker. Um, Maybe for the Denmark game, that could be something to look at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, uh, just to to mention the Denmark game, you know, we're going to be at home. It's going to be a sellout. I think the atmosphere in Uvibe could be absolutely amazing. If it's another cup final, we don't know what's going to happen, but I, I'd hope to see us, you know, definitely look to create and score more than we have been uh, in the last couple of games I, I go back to, to Brian Kerr's last game in charge against Switzerland ironically enough um, and we never looked like scoring in that game and we it only ever looked like ending in a draw and a draw for us was as bad as a loss we had to win that game and we never looked like winning that game we never looked like scoring in that game if I'm honest um, so I think yeah you'd hope look when we've gone behind in this in this group we've only been behind twice Against Denmark and against Switzerland, we've gone back. We've gone on to come back and equalise and get a result. If we go behind against uh, Switzerland on Tuesday night, I think we're gonna. I think we can uh, have that change of mindset and go for it, and you know at least get a result. Maybe not a win, maybe a draw. But you know, like I said, we have shown that we can we can go for a result when it doesn't look like we're gonna get one. That's possibly you know that could have influenced the thinking against Georgia we never we didn't go behind against them so do we protect the point that we have or do we go for the three but points you, that we you'd want you'd wonder then you'd have to be sitting there if you're in Switzerland tonight or you're part of the, the camp or Mick McCarthy's talking to the players it really is you know a win at all you know the whole kitchen sink goes at all at, costs, it, at, at all everything it's it's there tonight let's Let's go and you know. Let's make the let's the let's make a count tonight. Let's let's go with the chances here to win, and actually qualify. Yeah. Um, well, if you can't get yourself up for for this game or yeah. the next game, you, you shouldn't be playing yeah. international yeah. football, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and I, like, it 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 brings me back to you know I suppose the the most recent big big goals McLean against Wales. Can we pull out that type of a, a win, Wales? At the time, we were a very good side, but they were missing Bale. Joe Allen went off early in that game and stuff like that. So we actually finished the game quite strongly uh, in regards to their players. But we still, we had Daryl Murphy up front that night, didn't we? And, you know, he wasn't doing a whole lot. Going. We were very defensive. Other than Shane Duffy, unbelievable that night. The, the goal against Germany, Shane Long. Um, the Italian game. So these are all big moments. But you look around the squad now, any of the players that were kind of there, for that score them goals, they're not in the squad anymore. Your Hooligans retired um from international football. Shane Long is not in the squad. Um Robbie Brady's injured. And then I look at those big results and there was one common thing in in those games is that James McCarthy was the sitter mm. for those games. And he's not in the squad either. So it brings me to that point is as as well as Glenn Whelan, I didn't think Glenn Whelan done anything wrong the other night. I still can't understand the abuse he gets for doing what the manager basically instructs him to do. He's to sit in front of the back four and give the sim break a play and give the simple ball. That's all he's there to do. It's not uh, glamorous. It's it's it, but it's effective for for him. And he's also he's also he is also a leader within 
mm-hmm. the team, yeah. the 88, 89 caps, whatever it is, hugely respected by the players. I know certain fans and some people in the media give them, you know, maybe a hard time. The players will, will know what he brings. Um, he also has a bit of, he also has a bit of bite about him. He's a bit of, he's a bit of nasty. Oh, yeah, yeah. He'll give away the free if he has to. He'll clatter someone if he has to. He'll kick someone if he has to. You know, we need that. We do also need that aggression uh, in it as well, particularly a- away from home. And I think McCarthy, like other managers, see that we touched on it earlier. Maybe, maybe the Irish mindset, maybe the way we play, maybe the fact that we think we're probably underdogs against ninety percent of the you know the teams we'll play. That we have to be defensively strong, and Whelan's going to sit there and break everything up mm. well let's not forget he also struck the bar the last time we played this mm. um, great strike and you know if that goes in all of a sudden he's the biggest legend mm. ever you know what I mean? but the only thing that worries me about Whelan um, it's not his ability it's the fact that he's played the full 90 against Georgia and does that mean do we book uh, Cullen in there that's that. Like people say oh it's his debut whatever. I know he had a man of the match performance against Bulgaria that was a friendly but it's kind of one of them things is, does Whelan play an hour and come on for half an hour to finish it off to get that more legs around the midfield getting around the pitch because these do play quite quickly as we've seen their goal with Char when Char scored they do, do knock the ball I don't, I don't think I think it's if, if Whelan's relatively he'll start him I can't see him bringing on Glenn Whelan unless we're or Josh to, or no like sorry yeah if, if Whelan doesn't start yeah. I can't see him bringing him on at any stage of the game unless we're winning 1-0 and we're looking to to literally see it out so would he give Josh Cullen a, a start and Connolly? You, you know, we're going to talk about the starting 11. I can't see him. Mm-hmm. Can't yeah, see no, him not make, both of them, but I just wonder, um, would he would he look at maybe putting Cullen in this game? It's such a, it's such a big game as well. That, you know, you don't want to put too much pressure on him as well because he's only 20 or 21. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, he's not that old at all, but... I think he does have the temperament and he's had a really good start to life in the championship yeah. um, that he could possibly s- step it up if needs be but I, I just think maybe it's that bridge too far international football is a totally different kettle of fish to you know playing sitting sit defensive midfield in a championship team albeit they're only we, we touched on Stephen Kenny coming in and the desire and the clamour for for Irish fans to have a new a new way or a new style of doing it so you know um, will it be a question that if we don't qualify for this campaign and Kenny comes in will he blood all these you know Cullens and and younger players and give him a two campaign Mm. mandate and say listen you wonder if the fans would be that patient that's the only thing well you know the the patience is funny because ultimately as we always talk about you can have a great philosophy you can play lovely football you can do this that and the other it's points on the board that will ultimately win prizes and you touched on Brian Kerr's tenure there I don't think he did anything wrong. Too many draws, um, lacked a, a killer edge over two campaigns to get us. I think he still has the highest win ratio of any Irish manager ever. Did nothing really wrong, but just didn't didn't qualify either. And international management, we want to see progression. The FAI themselves are in financial, you know, difficulties as well. The qualification for Euros in Dublin has huge ramifications in the short term for sponsorship, money, everything like that that's coming through. So the, the pressure to go with the tried and trusted to get us there is is massive. And I, I can't see Mick making too many too many changes for, for Tuesday. Joe, what do you think? Um you know, I, I don't think you're you're too harsh on on Wheel anyway. I think you're a fan of his. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, and I've been a big fan of his like ever since uh, I saw him make the the breakthrough at Man City. Um, and you know, whenever whenever he's had a challenge, he's always you know fronted up. You know, he got he he got released by Man City and went to Sheffield Wednesday, who were in what is now League One. You know, um, he scored a goal that got him promoted from the playoffs. You know, he went to Stoke in the in the Championship and got promoted with them. Um, while during Stokes uh, stay in the Premier League every season they seem to sign a new midfielder that was going to replace Glenn Whelan and every season he finished with you know 30 plus appearances for, for Stoke uh, he's not one to back down from a challenge and 
Um, but he is 35 years old. He has just played 90 minutes in, uh, you know, in very warm weather, in a different time zone, and now they have to cope with uh, a flight, a long flight mm. to, to Geneva. Um, I, I agree with Eddie that I think if he doesn't start, he doesn't play. Um, uh, it's not... He's not really a player that comes on as a substitute unless you know we're we're looking to defend the lead in the last few minutes. And I think you know to go back to the point we made in, in the previous video, the the result in Macedonia, uh, ten twenty years ago rather, um, is going to play on his mind, um, or play on the manager's mind rather. Um, so, but I think Whelan will start, but I don't see him playing the full ninety minutes. Um, ninety minutes in two two ninety minutes. Uh, appearances uh, for a player, you know, at, at this stage of his career, is a lot to ask. Uh, I was disappointed that we didn't see Josh Cullen make his uh, his competitive debut against Georgia. Uh, I'm not saying he would have changed the game. I'm not saying he would have done anything different, better or worse than than Alan Brown who did come on. But I think he he earned um, he earned a spot or he earned a, a chance at that competitive first competitive appearance yeah, and I think in his last the, game. And I think, in fairness, a lot of the I suppose the criticism of fans are there. With with McCarthy is maybe that he's very loyal. He trusts certain players. Um, he likes other players in and around the squad. But when the chips are down, you know, is he going to go back to the to the player that he fundamentally trusts? It reminds me a bit of Trapattoni in a way. You know, he he trusted players yeah. mm-hmm. to do that work. I mean, Whelan's career for Ireland really kind of was based on Trapattoni's. Yeah delight in the fact that this fella did the role that he wanted he was very disciplined um, and maybe you know I hear it a lot of said maybe just do it we, we don't go with the creative player more than we should you know m- more than we should so should we start with with Cullen who's maybe more creative younger more legs do we start with Connolly no fear um, hungry got all the, the the willingness to go mightn't have the smarts but then I, I definitely think from McCarthy's point of view with managers like O'Neill and Trapattoni who would sit there and go I'm not getting stung with a with a sucker punch goal you know and it's all percentage based mm-hmm. as opposed to letting that creative talent flow and, and trust in the players and pass themselves out of trouble and create the opposition or create the positions which Stephen Kenny I know is you know he's he's founding his football on so we're looking to see a new philosophy I suppose in the next campaign but at the minute I, I, Mick will just stick with what yeah what he knows. I think that's the fear as well so you look at the time when we played Denmark and we lost 5-1 because at half time we went gung-ho mm-hmm. and we just left ourselves wide open mm-hmm. there'll be that fear there as well so I, I can understand being cautious for this one and if this one doesn't go well and please God, please God it does that we will have to go gung-ho against Denmark and go all out to, to try to beat them but um. Ultimately, the questions, I suppose, are, will Cullen get a run out? Um, because, as I said, James McCarthy has been a big part of big wins. Um, it's bit, although he was playing a lot more then, and, and I know why he's not in the squad now, and he's, you go back to loyalty, he's been very loyal to Cullen. Cullen's come in and trained, and he must have trained very well. He has that man of the match performance, and so that's why he's a peck in ahead. Yeah. He is an ahead of him in the pecking order. So I see it like that, and as far as I can, I can see he's probably going to go back to Collins, um, and yeah. starting up front when again. You know, for when they talk about creativity, and I know when he came on the last game, Burn when he came on, um, funny enough, if I saw Connolly up front, and we're we're looking to go for it, Burn as well coming in, mm-hmm. he's another fella, and Mick said it in fairness about him, he says he doesn't want him getting the ball from the back four. If Burn is going to play in a Mick McCarthy side, he's got to be attacking and creative with that with that pass and I wonder would Byrne be a big be, be someone who could make him I don't think he'll, he'll go with, with Byrne I just I don't think he trusts him in a game of that uh, stature pretty much it leaves you open to the idea of who else do we have in that creative it, it does and I guess my, well. my point would be probably if we were a goal down and it's 65 70 minutes and, and Connolly's there Mm, well, you do think uh, you do back to his delivery is very good as well no, from corners. No, as absolutely. Well. So delivery from corners, a bit of creativity, and then you have to say that if we're one nil down, the defensive side isn't 
as important and in a one-off game this game where we could win it I'd rather go and give it a lash and lose 3-1 than timidly you know not go for it when we're 1-0 down 65-70 minutes there's no point in being timid put on Jack Burr and tell him to be creative trying to get Connolly into the game you know push him up even we spoke about Doherty earlier on he, might, he mightn't start but when you watch the Doherty playing for Wolves his creativity his, his goal scoring threat you know is there for me the best place to use him would be as high up as we could and I think that would be a real shot of confidence for Doherty for him to come on and go now for the last 20 minutes 25 minutes play in the position that you you know are really really strong at at the minute go at them create space and I'd, I'd love to see if we do go a goal down that response that would be what I'm looking for and I think he'll say with the tried and trusted and the safe but if we go a goal down how do we then yeah. How do we then react? Well, there's also Alan George who's made mm. a good impact on the games that he's came on and played in. To be fair to him, I think he probably goes a little bit under the radar because he's playing in League One at the minute. Um, I actually kind of forgot about him myself until uh, I thought back to the Denmark game where he came on and he changed, he won the foul and he whipped in the ball for Duffy. Um, he'd be another one who could fill in that role. And I do think he's ahead of Byrne in the pecking order mm. as well. He seems to you go back to loyalty and trust, although he can't break into the, to the first team because he loves McLean. He absolutely loves McLean. I don't think he can take McLean out. I don't. I don't. I know people saying, "Oh, he's not starting," and this, that, and the other. And uh, I, I read a stat there that he gave away possession. Um, Does that for frequently, or no, for in the game against Georgia, oh, he gave away possession the most, or his touches, or whatever it was. But in the scheme of things, um, his energy, his desire. I know it sounds really basic, because all footballers should have that about them, but. Can he force something? You know, I think even McLean would tell you that his 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 mindset is probably his strongest attribute as a footballer and his physical conditioning. And if we're really looking for someone to crunch a full back, get a cross in, you know, but again sometimes his crosses against Georgia there was no one there. Yeah. And this is the thing, there's no point having McLean doing great work, getting to the byline, getting a great cross in. There's no one on. There's no one on the end of it. That ball needs mm. to be smarter. It's very like Martin O'Neill uh, era. There was no one in the box. There's no one in the box. So, so far back from so, Collins. Exactly. So with McGoldrick, with him holding it up so well, he brought McLean into the play yeah. a lot more and a lot quicker, and allowed the fullbacks then to push up. And it sounds really simple. And our midfielders. And our midfielders, and then they have the confidence to go. If McGoldrick holds it up and gives a ball to Hendrick. He can then switch the angle of the play quite quickly whereas I think Hendrick and Horan looked at each other a few times against Georgia and weren't sure who was going who was staying was the pass on should they have held on to it and pass it back that didn't look comfortable so for me the big thing for Switzerland would be can the players play with a bit, just a bit more positivity you know when I was coming in I was writing it down just be more positive there isn't a huge tweaking that's going to go on but just a little bit more composure. Just don't give the ball away so cheaply. Allow us to get set. Allow us to breathe. And if we have got Conley on or Collins is up there, play them in. Give them. You know he d- he didn't get a chance. Give them a ball to get in around behind the back. Let yeah. them show something. Um, and that'll be the big thing for me. Composure. Yeah. Choosing. Well, then just finish it off. Then um, cool. it's a cool final. Your prediction. Of the actual scoreline, and this is head over heart. Head over a, a draw. It's a draw written all over it for us. Yeah. 1 1. 1 1. Goal score. Goal score. Duffy. And you think that's fair, fair, fair analysis, Joe? Yeah, I agree with that. I think, um, you know, we don't. We don't beat teams ranked ahead of us very very often, and we really don't beat teams ranked ahead of us uh, away from home very often. Um, so yeah, I think a, a draw would probably be the most the most obvious uh, result. And you know, but a draw isn't a bad result because it means we're still in with a shout of qualification in that last game in against Denmark in uh, in November. Um, uh, as for goal scorer, 
Uh, I'm gonna go for Horan with a with a free kick. A real kicker, I suppose, would be where Georgia would be raised said again as if we'd beaten Georgia, a draw would be enough to qu- to qualify. You know, so it's it's again it'll all come out in the watch. Cash twenty two, yeah, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna go for uh, a two one win for Ireland, and I think it'll be one all. And I would love to see Connolly come on and get the second goal two one. So I'm just not, trying to be not, a bit positive. Not, there. not like fairy tales, is there? <laughs> no, well, I, I believe in it. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. I go back to Wayne Rooney scoring the goal against Arsenal when they were unbelievable at the time. But yeah. like, these types of moments do happen in football, and I'm hoping that this could be the. Uh, and then I can go back and tell you all I told you so. Yeah, happen. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, now let us know your thoughts in the comments, and a uh, huge thanks to Eddie O'Mahony, not Eddie O'Sullivan. And a huge thanks to Joe from Irish Abroad. Make sure to check out both Twitter accounts, Irish, Irish Soccer... Ireland Soccer Shirts, uh, com is the name of the virtual museum. Yeah. And the website is Ireland, or the Twitter account is Ireland Soccer Shirt. Yeah. And Joe is Irish underscore abroad, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, so check them both out. Both absolutely fantastic accounts. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to like this video. We'll speak to you all soon.